I will tell you, we take things like that for granted sometimes. So as soon as I heard that, she said she talked to three people and nobody knew what it was. Okay, I'll take that so, Sorry about that. Okay, let's move along. About a year and a half ago, Jamie and our colleague Jan Benetti attended a building supply conference north of Seattle. And uh, both the, the people in attendance were kind of like yourself. Uh, they were finance people, they were uh, back office folks for their respective companies, and mostly the accounting side of the house. And uh, we were going because a friend of ours had invited us to come, so we really didn't know what we were doing. It, it was an interesting conference. The lunch speaker was somebody called that gratitude guy. And I'll be honest with you, my eyes kind of roll. Uh, like, what are we getting with this? And this uh, gentleman by the name of David Brooke was introduced to us. And I know we were a room of about 200 people. An hour and a half later, the room was silent. Nobody was checking their cell phone. A few of us that had a little too much iced tea really needed to make an exit. They didn't, because we were captivated. And afterwards, the three of us went over and introduced ourselves. I, I talked to David about the possibility of having the Western Region Credit Conference and told him I would call in the next month or two, and which I did do about six or eight weeks later. And when I called him, I said, my name is John Floor, and he said, I remember meeting you. You saw your name J-O-N. Okay. At one point, you're saying, <laughs> and you were with two really attractive women. <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> they were Jan and Jamie. Yes, they were. <laughs> Since then, we've become very, very good friends. And he's really a very interesting fellow. We're very fortunate to have him here today. And I know you'll enjoy it. I think he will challenge you a little bit and make you think a little differently. And I will tell you, I did think differently as a result of having him here two or three times or whatever. I've lost track because we've also had lunch in the interview a few times. But I do look at things a little differently as a result of some very simple tools. And I think you're going to benefit from it. And so with that, Mr. Brook, the floor is yours. Thank you, John. Thank you. I will apologize right up front for the fact that my talk is very interactive. So I'm going to try to slow down a few things just to make sure that you finished your lunch. But uh, I get people involved as much as I can. To the retention rate seems to be so much better when you have people that are paying attention, partnering up, whatever, responding in kind. I will start out by asking how many people here have suffered a significant personal loss in your life? Show of hands. About uh, half, maybe. I'm fascinated because I go to high schools to do commencement speeches and I go to nursing homes where the average age is about 90. And what surprised me, in their nursing homes, everybody raises their hands, significant personal loss. You can imagine in their 80s and 90s. But what was shocking to me is how many high schools I've gone to, half the kids, 17, 18 years old, raise their hands. So what does a significant personal loss have to do with me? September 29, 1998, I used to go into a lot more detail, but my wife passed away. She was 38 years old. And she had passed away of a subscription, or prescription rather, prescription overdose from medication. She had started taking some things for her back and didn't get, 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 didn't get a good handle on it, and she passed away. And I'd also lost my father and my mother and my friends, car accidents, all these different things. I started thinking at some point, I have got to figure out a way to cope with life because what I'm seeing in my experience is that people don't have very good coping mechanisms. And we all need them. Some are destructive, but many are deadly. I'm from Seattle, and this heroin thing and all these things that are going on is just frightening. And people are always looking for a better way to cope. And so here we are, National Association of Credit Management. What does credit have to do with gratitude? Well, it's really more than that. It has to do with how you cope personally and professionally. This is your professional side here, and on your personal side, things that give you an ability to manage something to cope with it in a healthy way makes such a huge difference. So I'd like you, this is the first apology, I'd like you to all stand up if you would please. I know you're, some are right in mid-bite. Jamie's going, I didn't get enough, this is great chicken. And I just want you to put your right hand, I just want you to put your right hand up 
and take it in a right circleish. I can't even talk. I haven't enough chicken myself. In a, in a clockwise manner. So it should be going this way. There's no clock to look at. And just stretch it out. Feels good to stretch it a little bit clockwise. Now start bringing it slowly down. Bring it down to your forehead, your eyes. Keep it going clockwise. Chin, chest, and waist. What direction is it going now? Anti-clockwise? I like that. That was good. That's exactly correct. Counterclockwise. Okay, you can sit down. So I've never heard anti-clockwise, but because, because you, uh, you'd be surprised how many times I do this. Well, what direction is it going now? Nobody says anything. I have to, Bueller, can you help out? So, so you get a book. That is my way of showing you. Your arm did not change motion. You're looking at it from below and from above. And it's merely my way of saying, we could go to the glass of water and say it's half full or half empty. But this is a way of saying you have a choice in how you look at things. And we're going to do a little exercise. Try to locate that three by five card that's in front of you. And we're going to do a little exercise in a minute with that which is going to talk about the first thing I talk about, which is embracing gratitude. Gratitude is a thing that really saved me. I will tell you right now, when I finish up my talk, I usually say something to the effect of gratitude changed me, it saved me, it transformed me, and it can save you too. That's one of the things I usually wrap up with because it completely, I think, saved my life from going down a path I wouldn't have wanted to consider. It gives you a vehicle with which to look at how your life is. How I define gratitude is simply this. I think being grateful and having a gratitude mindset, an attitude of gratitude, if you will, helps you focus on what you have versus what you don't have. I'll guarantee you, you all have friends. They're always talking about who has the most. Better husband, better wife, bigger car, bigger house, bigger boat. It's always this nonstop cat chasing your tail of trying to keep up with the Joneses and it's just a foolish I had a good friend of mine tell me once that he had clients from 5 million to 500 million and I said George what did you learn about your law practice he goes very simply David the relationship between money and happiness was 100 percent inversely related the most money the least happy the least money the most happy so gratitude I one of the books I didn't bring it with me I brought gratitude journals it's called happiness starts with gratitude I don't know if you can truly be happy, in my opinion, until you're really grateful and appreciating what you have. And it's such a great mindset. And as I said, having lost a wife to prescription medication, for a father to suicide, all these other things. And I'm thinking, what would they have done if they had a gratitude journal and wrote in it for five minutes a day? And I'm going to talk about that. That's kind of the center point of what I talk about. I was doing a talk. And of course, we all have our phones. You're going to be using your phones in a little bit. My phone buzzes, and I'm actually doing a talk, and so I'm, I'm kind of waiting while people are writing on some things and some cards, and it's a text, and it's from a buddy of mine telling me that Robin Williams had died. And I remember, and I, it was right in the middle of the talk, and I said, you know, I wonder if Robin Williams, I wonder if that would have impacted him any differently than writing a gratitude journal, because every single day you talk about what you have versus what you don't have. So many things that we have relate to our mindset. So. Here's the first, I'm trying to gauge, I'm trying not to go into the lunches too much, but I, want, I just want you to do this three by five card exercise. So here's what you need to do. You need to partner up with another person, so we need an even number of people. So however, it doesn't matter if you know the person or not, two, 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 that's perfect. You guys are perfect. Two, two, two. Jamie, would you do me a monster favor and go over to that table? Thank you, okay, thank you. Two, 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 yep, perfect. Perfect. So we just need, just, what's your name? What's your name? Bob. Bob. Thank you, Bob. Okay. So now you have the three by five card. This exercise is designed to show you personally what embracing gratitude will do for you. So yeah, does everybody have a card, by the way? Because I passed them all out. Anybody need one? One card per person. Okay. And you got pens. There's plenty of pens. <laughs> so we're in good shape there. On that three by five card... Upper left hand corner, every one of you write these two words. You, Y O U, R, A R E. You are. And then as soon as you're done with that, and I don't care if you never have met this person or not, but your partner, write their name in the upper right hand corner. You might know them, if not, ask them what their name is. Okay. 
And lastly, for you fast people, lower right-hand corner, sign your name. And you know, I put the date too. I like to put the date, 12, 16, 17. In the bottom, bottom uh-huh. So upper left-hand corner is you are, upper right-hand corner is your partner's name. Did I say 12, 16? 2, 16. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's so funny. 2, 16, 17. Okay, I'm really... I'm really sorry. This, I said 12, 16. I said to the waiter, did I really say 12? He goes, you did. Yeah, thank you. Good. Okay, I'm done. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Again, I'm going to emphasize this. I don't care... Oh, he's gone now. God, that was so funny. No, you did say 216 or 1216. <laughs> okay, I'm no good as a speaker. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Now let me get to the right screen or I get a little timer on me. Okay, whether you've met this person, whether you're married to him, it doesn't matter. It has no bearing whatsoever how long you've known him, five minutes or 50 years or 20 years or whatever. I'm going to give you 60 seconds and here's what I want you to do. I want you to write every descriptor that you can about that person. You are happy, you are energetic, you are a smiling person, you are a great mother. Any way you would describe them, as many words as you can, or, or sentences or anything, in 60 seconds, go. About 10 seconds. Okay, and stop. Now I know some of you just wrote a few things. Some of you are writing all sorts of things. Okay, listen up people. 60 seconds now. Take 30 seconds each and read to each other what you wrote about each other. Go. That is odd. Yeah, because you didn't think it'd be like 10 or 20 percent left or something like that. Okay, and stop. Now switch cards so you have the card that was written about you. And even though you just heard your partner verbalize how they saw you, or you are energetic, or you are powerful, or you are driven, whatever the words they use to describe you. I want you to read through and just read what they just wrote about you because there's something even more powerful about seeing it on paper in their handwriting on how they would describe you. So as you're looking at that card, your you are card, if you will, I have a question. How many people, by show of hands, might hold on to that card? Just raise your hand. Everybody's raising their hand. That's good. <laughs> well, everybody, everybody raises their hand. So here's my question again, or another question I should say. Why is that the case? Why do we let other people define us and describe us in such glowing terms, but we don't do that to ourselves? 
I don't. I mean, I can hear thank yous. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you. Uh, oh my gosh, giggles and laughs and everything like the way somebody sees you. That is a 60 or 120 second example of what embracing gratitude will do for you. Every I've never seen a hand not raised when I say how many people are going to hold on to that card. I, I immediately I saw Jamie and I thought, okay, Jamie, you go over here because there's three people and we can get we match it up. But every so often there's an odd number and I'll have my microphone and I'll go sit down because we got one odd person and I'll do it. Hi, my name is David and we'll do it and we'll do the little exercise. I've got a pack of that thick in my briefcase of all those cards that have been written about me. And I will tell you, the number one word I always get, it never fails. You're so intense. <laughs> I just go. I go, God, is that good or bad? I guess it's good. So embracing gratitude. Next thing, I'm going to talk about six things today. Embracing gratitude is number one. Number two is it takes as long as it takes. I was debating with a friend of mine the other day if I'm going to keep saying how old I am. I'm 67 years old. I had a birthday about two weeks ago. I'm going to do this to 77, 87, 97, God willing. And I'm not only not ashamed of my age, I'm actually kind of proud of it because I've worked pretty hard to take good care of myself. And then when somebody like a 38-year-old wife dies and other friends die from drinking too much and smoking too much and carousing too much, I was thinking, gosh, I've learned so many lessons. Wouldn't it be nice to be around for a while to take advantage of those lessons? But I will say this, when you live that long and you see what's happened to other people, you're always, at least I was always searching for some sort of vehicle. And that's why gratitude is so powerful. And that's why when I get to go to all these different conferences and big amounts of people, and I spoke to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base lewis McCord. 22 soldiers commit suicide every single day. 